me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name This episode of Green Light Maine is being brought to you by the Maine Development Foundation, connecting people and strategies to drive Maine's economy. Good morning, I'm your host, Jolene Gervais, and welcome to Green Light Maine, the business competition where 26 Maine-based businesses compete and present their companies in an attempt to win the $100,000 grand prize. Every week, two innovative contestants pitch their ideas to our judges because on Greenlight Maine, even though there can only be one cash winner, everyone benefits from the encouraging feedback from the judges and the chance to showcase their brilliant companies to you. Now, let's meet our experienced judges. Welcome Yellow Light Breen. Hi, I'm Yellow Light Breen. I'm the president and CEO of the Maine Development Foundation. And the Maine Development Foundation, we work on long-range strategies to drive economic growth for all of Maine. And we do that in a few simple ways. We work on economic research, so we really know what to focus on. Uh, we work on leadership development, so we get people from all over the state working together. Uh, and we work on creative partnerships, whether it's tackling an industry challenge, like uh, the closure of paper mills across Maine, or whether it's working on really important workforce issues. Great, we're so happy to have you. And welcome back, Leah Hurley. Hi, thanks. It's so great to be back. Um, my name is Leah. I run a boutique communications practice out of Portland called Craft. Um, our focus primarily is on the social impact space, and I take a values-based approach to marketing and communications. I get to work a lot with entrepreneurs and organizations that support entrepreneurs, so it's really great to be here, and I'm excited to hear the two contestants. A perfect fit for Greenlight Maine. And finally, welcome Evan Joes. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. i um, Evan Joes. I'm coming here from Portland, Maine and Spinnaker Trust, a wealth management firm there. Um, I'm an investment director with a focus on alternative investment strategies. Perfect. And we're going to talk to you all in just a few minutes. But first, it's time to introduce our first pitch from Crooked Face Creamery. Welcome, Amy Robottom. And Thanks. you have, uh, you're growing and you've received some really good recognition. Yeah, yeah. I uh, won an ACS award, American Cheese Society award, um, for my whole milk ricotta, and uh, some other regional awards. So that's given me some confidence to to really put my heart and soul into this business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, welcome to Greenlight Maine, and whenever you're ready, you can just begin and look sure. right at our judges. Sure. So my name's Amy. I've been making cheese now for about eight years. I grew up on a 70 cow dairy farm in Norwalk. And uh, I was the youngest of three kids, and I just felt like uh, I never quite helped. I was always in the way. <laughs> and, uh, and I saw my parents working so hard, and I was just tr trying to find a way to fit in. And it wasn't until my late 20s where I got my hands into cheese making. And it was like I had found my calling. I started out you know, nights and weekends uh, playing around. I worked in sales and marketing full time and, and slowly grew my business um, over the last eight years. So for the last three years, I've been, um, I've been full time cheese making. Um, I've always had the mentality of making a few cheeses and making them really, really well. I've researched a lot of other cheese companies over the years. and. Uh, the most successful seem to really focus on one style and uh, create a really strong marketing com campaign around it and, and a solid distribution. And so I, I've always sort of kind of built my business around that mentality. Um, my cash flow is my whole milk ricotta, which wasn't an easy sell at first. I, in my first few farmers markets, I had uh, whole milk ricotta on my sign and and I made it with Jersey milk, it was super rich and creamy, but people would walk by and be like, oh, that's ricotta, you just use that in lasagna, I'm not making lasagna. And I could just see them say that, and I'm like, all right, how do I switch this up? How do I call this something different to get them to try it? And so I started calling it fresh cheese, fresh cow's milk cheese. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I'll try that. Oh, that's amazing, what kind of cheese is that? And so that, that, that's where it all started, and I was also at the same time making um, an aged Gouda-style cheese, um, but, uh, but it takes months to age. So I, I was waiting for those batches um, to age and, and ripen, and meanwhile, the ricotta sales just started to grow and grow and grow. 
And so, um, uh, two years ago, I, uh, my smoked cheeses were always really popular. So, um, you know, my first batch was in a gutted out wood stove like six years ago, but I've obviously designed something much more um, efficient and uh, legit. And so um, I came out with my smoked ricotta, and in the last two years, um, it's grown my business over 83%. And I went from you know three wholesale accounts to over 70. So it's it's uh, it's it's exciting. Um, I've got a good product, um, but I'm also constantly developing my aged cheese line too. Excellent so. job. What would you do with the prize money? I would, I, I'm, like I said, I've been uh, making cheese at my parents' old dairy barn. Um, it's a nine by 12 space. And uh, I would, I would, I need to grow, I need to expand. It's, uh, it's too small. Sure. And so that's what I would put it into. Yellow. Yeah, uh, thanks Amy, you had me at cheese, first of all, I have to say, <laughs> I love cheese. But, um, you know, what, what is your vision of how this thing can grow? Like, what's your largest um, wholesale account? And if someone came knocking, if you yeah. succeeded wildly and someone came knocking and said, you know, I, I need to make a huge order, yeah. how would you respond to that? Well, I'm already order? responding. I've got a, a, an order in for a larger cheese vat. Uh, I've got a 40-gallon kettle right now, and I'm at max. Um, I have a Whole Foods a regional office has tried it. I've met with them. They want to bring it on board. Um, but I need an FDA audit, and I need a new facility to do that. So th I, this is a really critical time. All that's happening right now. Leah, yeah. you talked about number of wholesale accounts. Yeah. What does sales volume look like right now? So uh, for my main distributor, um, they've got about 40 accounts, and they order anything from the three-pound tubs to the case, and there's six units per case. So. Um, uh, at the, the volume right now, I'm, I'm putting out about three batches a week with 120 uh, units per batch. So, Evan, quick question. Yeah, great. What's your um, what's your plan for getting your brand out there? Um, how much money are you putting into that currently? And I'm I've just been really working. Uh, it's a bootstrap. <laughs> um, I invested a lot with Pulp and Wire in Portland, and they we did a whole new uh, branding campaign last year. And so that was a huge deal for me. Uh, I invested a lot of uh, time and energy into that, and that was a major reason for my growth. I, they, they took my, my existing logo and they, uh, we turned it into something. I mean, I've, that's what I've put a lot of energy into in the last year as well as, as new packaging. Nice job. Great questions by our judges. We gotta take a quick break, but we'll be right back, don't go away. Greenlight Maine would like to thank the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, the Maine DECD, helping businesses and communities prosper. At Bangor Savings Bank, we know the value of making genuine connections with our customers, providing a memorable experience with every interaction. We are committed to doing the right thing and working as a partner with the people and communities we serve. With convenient mobile and online banking technology, we offer more ways for you to reach out to us. Because at Bangor Savings Bank, you matter more. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Are you trying to increase sales? At Dream Local Digital, we've been helping businesses using Facebook, Google, and other online tools for over eight years. We're experts at helping small businesses because we work with them nationwide. Dream Local publicizes the important part of me and what I stand for and what Archers is about. We'd love to help you grow your business as well. Give us a call today. For more information about the presenters and panelists on all the Greenlight Main shows, visit greenlightmain.com. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. Our Sunday morning conversation is with Maine Development Foundation, and Yellow is here to tell our viewers at home what MDF does. Good morning. It's great to be here. Maine Development Foundation is a great little nonprofit in Augusta, and we are the place where we try to bring business, government, education, and nonprofits together to work on really challenging long term economic growth issues. So we work on the policy and strategies to try to move all of Maine's economy forward. And you have so much going on right now. So what are the big things that you can tell us 
Sure, a couple of things we're most known for. Uh, one is an annual uh, research project that tracks the main economy. How are we doing? Where are we doing well? Where are we doing poorly? It's called the measures of growth. And in that, we try to highlight the areas where Maine really needs to focus if we're going to try to grow jobs in and economic output in Maine. Um, and a lot of that stuff is around education and workforce. Probably not surprisingly, when we go around Maine, the number one thing that every single business, big, small, doesn't matter what industry, doesn't matter what region, workforce, 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 I can't find the people, I can't train them fast enough, they don't have the right skills yet, um, I've got too many people retiring, workforce is the big thing. Huge problem. So what do we do about it? Well, it's, it's going to take us thinking very differently. If, I, I like to say on these big challenges, if it was easy, it would already be done. Sure. So it is going to take thinking very differently. And one of the things is recognizing we can't birth our way out of this problem. We're going to have to attract people to the state who don't look like us uh, to be part of the workforce in the future. And we're not going to get there by just working with high school and college age kids. Mostly, it's going to be working with adults who are already in our workforce and getting them back to school, getting them into the skilled trades, getting them to earn college degrees. Um, and most of our systems weren't built for adult learners. You know, they were built for teenagers and 20-somethings. Absolutely. So getting people to move to Maine for the jobs that are here and also attracting the new remote workforce where you really work for a firm in Manhattan, but you can sit in Cape Elizabeth or Bangor or in the county and do your job from home. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we put out a, a platform earlier this summer with the State Chamber of Commerce. And in addition to the workforce issues, broadband access is a huge element of what Maine needs to move forward. And probably about half of the places in Maine don't have broadband of any type. And those that do may not have the speeds that we truly need. It's going to take everybody working together, leverage the private sector as much as we can, but give them the right incentive to serve places where the households and the businesses are just, just too far apart. We definitely need broadband. What is your prediction of when Maine will get it? I think over the next 10 years, you will hopefully see an enormous sustained investment. We've already come a long way. It's just that the technology changes even faster than we've been able to invest. But we've lost so many businesses in rural Maine. I think now everyone gets it. We can't keep the businesses we already have or attract new ones unless they can access the world and their workers can access the world. And you folks do this beautiful report on the state's economy and how things are going. What can you tell us? Well, like I said, the, the, the number one challenge is workforce. We trail our competition in southern New England in terms of the proportion of our workforce that has education beyond high school we have to change that dynamic. So, you know, we're in a high cost, very competitive region of the globe. Our key is having the talent that can actually deliver the goods and services to stay competitive. And overcome those challenges. Yes. Well, thank you so much for all that vital information and we look forward to seeing you again on the show. Thanks for having me. All right. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna hear our second pitch, so don't go away. For almost 25 years, Maine Biz has been providing business news, information, and analysis for business owners and C-level executives in Maine, from Fort Kent to Kittery. Maine Biz serves the decision makers of Maine across multiple channels, including its flagship print digital publication, website, events, daily report, real estate insider, and weekly newsletter. Let Maine Biz help your business succeed. Inform. Engage. Connect. I'm Michael Bork, President and CEO of Memic, where all of us want Maine to be a great place to start and grow a business. Over 25 years, Memic has led a reduction in workplace injuries of 40% in Maine, cutting the cost of workers' comp in half. Workplace safety is our passion, because when people are safe, businesses succeed. And when Maine businesses succeed, Maine succeeds. Memic, proud sponsor of Greenlight Maine, growing Maine one dream at a time. To find more resources on how to start and grow your business, visit GreenlightMaine.com. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. Our second pitch is with Maine Techs. Welcome, Stephanie Lay. Thank Another you. Another great story. Tell us, how did you get started? Well, this started by uh, accident. It was by one photo, photo posted on Facebook. Um, and within two weeks, we had 109 orders, a patent attorney, a food scientist, USDA involved. And uh, now currently we're in 92 stores, four hotels, two resorts, and one college. Beautiful. 
good for you. Well, welcome to Greenlight, Maine, and whenever you're ready, we can begin. Thank you very much. Hello, judges. My name is Stephanie Lane. I'm the owner of Maine Tech Salsa and the founder of the Special Foundation for Autism, and I'm about to change the world of autism with salsa. That's right, you heard me, salsa. In 2002, my son Bryce was diagnosed with Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD. And uh, that, the statistics showed that autism was found in one in 500 children. Now it is found in one in 59 children, and we need to figure out how to employ these folks as they age. This was a complete accident. I, I have been an autism activist for a decade. I used to dress up every day, and now I wear yoga pants and I'm covered in tomatoes. This whole entire salt company has changed my son's life. He now works, he has three jobs, not just one, he has three jobs, and it has proven that the, in the world of autism, uh, the biggest misconception is that they can't do anything. Well, we're going to prove that wrong. Um, it, this has changed his life so much that he now delivers with me. He does every aspect of this business, but the jarring and the paperwork. The jarring is a little hot. I have the burns on my hands to prove it. With the Greenlight Main funding, we could provide an employment for autism, people with autism and also in, uh, provide them with a sense of self-worth and that they can take care of themselves, to provide for themselves. This is the biggest fear of a parent for a parent of a child with autism is how are they going to take care of themselves as they get older. And now my fear has been taken away from me because I know that my son will be able to work our company. Excellent story, great pitch. Take the first question from Yellow. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, I don't know if your son is your only employee now, and then what's the growth path of you know how much do you have to grow to keep adding uh, employees to the business to, to carry out this mission you're talking about? Right, right. Well, he is my only employee. We actually, just this past weekend, he grilled 500 pounds of tomatoes by himself with no prompting and no visual aid, which is awesome. Um, but the, we will be growing, we are working, currently working with the town of uh, Wyndham Economic and Development to solidify a commercial kitchen space. Once we move into the commercial kitchen, we will be able to add more employees as we grow, as the company grows. Leah. How integrated is um, the social impact component of your business into your marketing messaging? Well, it's, it's important that we uh, get the word about autism. When my son was diagnosed in 2002, not very many people knew about it. We were stared at a lot, and, and you know, but now people know about it a lot more, obviously. And, um, but there's not anything on the work spectrum, because now these children, these kids are now getting to the age of where they're, uh, they're aging out of the system. And once you age out of the system, there's nothing. You have no programs, you have n nothing. So that's what we want to fix. Eben. You mentioned being in over 90 stores. Um, what's the, the near-term future look like on, on that front? Great. Um, we have uh, been offered to grow with Hannaford. We are currently in 27 of their stores, um, and we, we were just approved for more. And um, we had discussed about, about uh, growth once we get into a commercial space because we've grown out of our kitchen. We're still in our home kitchen. Um, we're still making a thousand jars in our home kitchen um, with with you know salsa all over the place. Um, so that's you know. As soon as we get into that commercial kitchen, we'll be able to grow into more stores and, and get more accounts because then I can get out of the kitchen and go tell our story and spread it around and really get, that, get the accounts going. Yellow. What marketing is working best for you right now? Are you, know, are you going out to um, showcase this retail, you know, tastings, whatever? How are you getting the word out today? It's a good question. My big mouth has been helping me the most. I'm helping us the most because I tell everyone about it. it the, the conversation starts, have you ever heard of the autism salsa? And people are like, huh, autism salsa? No. Every single morning I wake up and put my feet on the floor, I think, autism salsa. Who would have thunk of that? And the only grilled salsa. And the only grilled salsa on the morning. And that's according to my patent attorney. And if he's lying, he owes me a lot of money. Leah. So why salsa? Why not salsa? I mean, you know, it was just, uh, like I said, this was an accident. And as we grew, I noticed my son growing along with the business. And we now call it a family business. Great answers and great questions from our judges. We are going to take a short break, but don't go away. There's more Green Lightning coming at you. Furniture for Greenlight, Maine is provided by Thomas Mosier Furniture, handmade American furniture since 1972. 
Are you trying to increase sales? At Dream Local Digital, we've been helping businesses using Facebook, Google, and other online tools for over eight years. We're experts at helping small businesses because we work with them nationwide. At Hort Roofing, we pride ourselves on doing quality roofs, not social media and direct marketing. That's why we hire the professionals at Dream Local. We'd love to help you grow your business as well. Give us a call today. In 1972, Tom Moser committed his life's work to craft and four decades later employs 70 fine craftsmen and women in our shop in Auburn, Maine. With showrooms and customers from coast to coast and numerous awards and accolades, Tom has firmly established himself as an entrepreneurial tour de force and has proven that a life doing what you love is indeed possible. This year's winner of Greenlight Maine will win this handmade Thomas Moser beacon box and $100,000. Broadcast facilities are provided by Hassan University's NESCOM, the New England School of Communications. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. This is the juicy part of the show where we get to hear from our judges and what they think. Two outstanding pitches. We all got to try the cheese and the salsa. They're phenomenal. Let's kick this off talking about Amy since she pitched first. Yeah, well, you had me at food, so I'm on the right episode. But um, <laughs> both were, were incredibly inspiring. I think it was notable that both are driven by a purpose larger than themselves and larger than the business. With Amy, it's you know this passion about preserving the dairy economy in rural Maine, mm -hmm. which is near and dear to so many of us. With Stephanie, of course, it's her son and others with autism and employing them. So that, that's an incredibly inspiring aspect to these businesses. Sure is. Um, I, was, I was really impressed um, when we had a chance to really go deep with Amy that she's getting her head around, uh, what does this really have to be to be a viable business? She's working with counselors and advisors from all over the place um, to understand the business and figure out how to grow it, even though she's just one person. Right, and I think she used the terms busting at the seams. She is growing, she needs more space. Yeah. yeah, I mean the thing I can't get, I can't quite get a sense for yet because she's, you know, charting the course as an entrepreneur is how how scalable is this from a production perspective, and how will she lead that scale? Um, you know, that that's something to be to be proven. Where salsa seems like a slightly easier manu to manufacture. Yeah. I agree with that. I think they, they both face the challenge of coming out of the home kitchen um, and into more of a, a, a arena where they can manufacture at low cost um, and make these into viable businesses. Um, and that's a big challenge. Um, I am impressed with uh, Stephanie's salsa. It's excellent. It's differentiated, in my opinion. Um, and it is, it is a food that could, um, I can see, scaling, um, whereas the, the cheese is a bit more of a small batch. Excellent, but still small batch and harder to scale, I think. For me, the scalability kind of cuts both ways because it's such a commodity. And I, I, I don't know how it competes out there with thousands of other salsas. Mm. Um, whereas this one, the cheese could have a much slower growth trajectory, but, but really capture some differentiation and, and kind of create a market. Um, so that kind of goes both ways, you know, yeah, which, yeah, which way will it go? Saying, yeah. I know, it's so challenging because they've both created incredible products, they're, and they're, they're very different, but they are both very, very strong in their own right. And I think it's, just as you said, it's at, they're at this critical growth stage, and the question is really how are they going to be, as business people, navigating that growth? How scalable are the products? Scaling seems to be the challenge, as you said, and the salsa, she said it's the only one that's grilled. The cheese made with Maine milk, mm. I mean, that's huge. People want the made in Maine brand. Mm. So I could see like Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut, that's what they're all about. So I think both of them, that's gonna be their challenge is like marketing that, right. scaling that, pushing it out. Traceable authentic food is huge. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but the mission orientation yeah. of Stephanie's product employing folks with autism is, that's powerful. Can, the, can she figure out a way to break through? It, what's tough for me is, you know, just to be really, um, I don't know, uh, tough-minded as a, as a business. Um, you know, I don't know if Stephanie is as receptive to outside help and counsel. She's very strong-willed. She's very independent. She's got this unbelievably powerful vision. 
that she's after. She's very passionate, yes. But I don't know if she can kind of back off that a little bit and, and kind of um, get the help that she needs to really think about it as a business and right. not solely a mission. Right, and you folks get a lot of time with them off camera, and so we learned more about Stephanie. She wants 80% of her workforce to, to their, have autism, so that's awesome, but how does she get to that point, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm impressed with Stephanie's drive, though. I mean, she said to us that she wants to be in the car, she wants to be driving around, selling her salsa. Um, she's clearly very driven and passionate about this product, and I think that counts for a lot. Growing She's in a business. 27 Hannaford's already and just asked to be in 12 more. That's very so we nice got time for a quick final thought from each of you. Uh, the main food scene is awesome. I, I feel you know, really fortunate to see just two tremendous, tremendous examples of, of where this thing can go for Maine. Yeah, I mean, it's so inspiring to see these ideas come to life in this way, and I, I'm really excited to see where they take it. Excellent. Yeah, I'm very excited for both these entrepreneurs. The products are excellent, and I think they'll both uh, find their way. Great discussion. we got to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to find out who today's winner is. Don't go away. To find more resources on how to start and grow your business, visit greenlightmain.com. We're very proud of the product we make and the way that we make it. The most important features of our original dog vest are in its design. Traditional lenders, you know, they steer away from unproven track records. Can you come? Hold up. CEI gave us the opportunity to build a track record, show that our future path will be more solid than our past. Forevermark Diamonds. Beautiful, rare, responsibly sourced. Available at all Days Jewelers locations in Maine and New Hampshire. For more information about the presenters and panelists on all the Greenlight Maine shows, visit greenlightmaine.com. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. Unfortunately, it's that time where we have to say goodbye to one of our contestants, but they can always come back next year. So judges, tell us who today's winner is. Congratulations to Maine Techs. Stephanie is moving on in the competition. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We appreciate your feedback. So check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to learn more about our resources, the contestants, or if someone you know has any interest in starting a business, visit us at greenlightmaine.com. Have a happy Sunday. Congratulations, nice job. Greenlight Maine has been brought to you by the Maine Development Foundation. Connecting people and strategies to drive Maine's economy. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, Maine. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, Maine. Greenlight Maine has been a paid-for presentation by the Portland Media Group.